Hey, welcome everyone. In this video, I'm going to explain how to understand internet speeds, whether it be download or upload. It doesn't matter. Once you're through with this video, understand both of them. And I'm going to explain several things throughout this video, really simplified. Uh, but let's start with an example of how people make the mistake of internet speeds. So let's pretend I'm an average person, right? And this is, this is where most people make the mistake of reading internet speeds. It's very, very common. Let's say I want to purchase a new internet plan. And there's advertising download speeds of one gigabit per second. That's incredibly fast. Okay, a lot of people think that, hey, if I have one gigabit per second download speed, that means I can download a one gigabyte file in one second, right? And then, okay, of course, that means if I have a 15 gigabyte file, I can download it in 15 seconds. That is actually 100% incorrect. That's not what this means, okay? This means you will download this one gigabyte file in eight seconds, all right? And it means you would download this 15 gigabyte file in two minutes, eight seconds. This is where people make the big mistake. Same thing, if you have a 500 megabits per second download speed, people think you can download a 500 megabyte file in one second, 100% incorrect. It would take you eight seconds. Okay, so we're going to continue on, but before that, a few things I want to mention really quickly is that you should really understand how the internet works before continuing. It's astonishing how many people do not know how the internet works. I have another video explaining it, super simplified. A link to that is in the video description. There's another video I have that explains internet technologies. So for example, if you have maybe cable internet, fiber, uh, DSL, satellite internet is booming nowadays. 56K dial-up, believe it or not, some people are still using it. That video explains how the internet technologies work, the good and bad of each one, and the theoretical speed you would get. So the reason I say that, and it's important for this video too, for example, I have 150 megabits download speed in my house over cable internet. I will probably never ever see that speed or achieve it. In fact, at certain times of the day, it'll go reduced to half that speed for cable internet. Okay, so another interesting video to watch, but we're continuing here. And for the remainder of this video, I'm going to be referring to internet service providers as ISP. Okay, ISP is a very common term. What that basically is, is the company providing you the internet service. So here in Canada, that could be Dell, Rogers, uh, Tech Savvy. In the US, that could be, I think, Comcast and Verizon. So it's who you purchase your internet plan from. Okay, so the most important thing to know and this is where all the confusion happened, is this top line right here. This is the most important thing in the entire video you're watching. And that is uh, the difference between bits and bytes. So let's talk with networking first. Networking speeds, upload, download, doesn't matter regardless, is always a reference in bits. And bits is always written down with the lowercase b. So for example, here on the left side, I have network speeds and they have megabit per second. Well, that's a lowercase b lowercase b, lowercase b. If you had a one gigabit per second uh, connection for downloading at your house, for example, it would be one capital G and then lowercase b. Okay, so network transfer speed is always lowercase b for bits. Now storage space, which could be say the size of your computer SSD, it could be the storage space taken up by a certain uh, picture or video file, it's 100 megabytes, whatever it is, for example, it's always referenced as byte. Okay, network transfer speeds is bits, storage space is byte, and byte is referenced with a capital B. This is the, the difference happens. So on this column on the right, I have hypothetical files sizes. You'll notice as capital B, capital B, capital B. So if it's 100 megabytes, well, it's a capital MB. If it's one gigabyte file, well, capital B. Same with one terabyte, so on and so forth. Always capital B. Now the thing that understand here, and this will explain the formula. It's a very super simple formula. It's so easy. To understand your internet speed and how long it would take to download a certain file, it's simple. It takes eight bits to equal one byte, All right? So some of you already probably realized the formula when you saw this at the top, but let's go through some examples now. So, you know, okay, it takes eight bits to equal one byte. Well, let's start with this one right here. Let's pretend you have a hypothetical download speed at home of 100 megabits per second. Well, you wanna know how long does it take you to download a 100 megabyte file or a one gigabyte file? Well, it's simple. Let's start first. 
by taking 100 megabits per second and divide by 8. And that gives us 12.5, okay? So this is how many megabytes you would download within a second. Now with that information, we want to know, okay, how long would it take to download this? Well, now you do divide this number, this file size, by this here. So if you have a 100 megabits per second connection, it would take you 8 seconds to download a 100 megabyte file. Okay? Now let's pretend you want to download a 1 gigabyte file based on this speed. Well, you divide 1 gigabyte by 12.5 megabytes per second, and it take you about a minute, 25 seconds. So the, the rest is pretty self-explanatory, but we'll continue on with a few more real life examples, but now you get it. Just take your internet download speed or upload speed, whatever, divide by eight, then take your file size and, div and divide it by this number here, right? So let's take another example. 500 megabits per second would equal to, if divided by eight, 62.5, right? That's how many megabytes per second you would download at, okay? So let's say I have this connection speed and I want to download a one gigabyte file. Well, how long would it take me? Well, okay, using that calculation, it'll take you 16 seconds, okay? So this divided by this will equal to 16 seconds. Pretty simple. Let's take one more real life example. And this is actually really common is, let's say you have an internet speed of 150 megabits per second, pretty common, and you want to download a 50 gigabyte video game because downloading video games is very common now to your console or your PC tower, whatever it may be. And it can take quite a bit of time. You have to wait. Okay, so let's convert first. 150 megabits converted to 150 megabytes per second is 18.75. Excuse my horrible drawing or writing. It's 18.75. Okay, so how long would it take me to download this? It's gonna take me 47 minutes and 43 seconds. Okay, so at this point, if you're satisfied with understanding network transfer speeds, you're done. You can close off this video, hit the like button before you go, and you're set. But for anyone else wondering, hey, why do ISPs advertise this speed and not this speed? You know, why do they advertise megabits per second and not megabytes per second? Same with this, same with this. It, is that false advertising? Is that fair to the consumer? Is that misleading? Yeah, yes and no. No, because in the IT industry, for the longest time, it's always been bits per second. So one gigabit per second, for example. Another example is 500 megabits per second. Heck, even, uh, I don't know, 60 kilobits per second. You know, back when internet was super slow, you, you, you would reference it in kilobits per second. So this is not incorrect. They're just following the standard that's always been set since, well, internet really started. So nothing wrong with doing this. But the misleading thing here is that bigger numbers in marketing is usually better. It's, it's just better because people are like, bigger numbers, bigger numbers, I must buy it, I must have it. But they don't always know what they're buying, right? You know, they don't probably know that 100 megabits per second is 12.5 megabytes per second. You know, 500 megabits per second, that's a huge number. But it comes down to 62.5 megabytes per second. So yes, it's misleading in that sense, but it's not incorrect. It, ISPs are allowed to do that and they can. It makes sense. You now know how to read internet speeds and know what to pay for when you're signing up with a certain ISP. And that's pretty much it. So be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and do check out my network playlist in which I have other videos explaining stuff like this. Uh, link to that is in the video description. And thanks for watching.